Welcome to the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. We are into our 11th study of a series of 24 wonderful lessons. Do not miss any one of them, for all these topics are vital. Our topic tonight is purity and power. I want to begin with a story found in 2 Kings chapter 5. Naaman was a brave, rich, and a famous commander for the armies of Syria. He contracted leprosy, the most dreaded disease of Bible times. Leprosy meant isolation from loved ones and a slow, wretched death. A Hebrew slave girl who worked in Naaman's house told Mrs. Naaman about Prophet Elisha. She told the Prophet Elisha would heal him of his leprosy. 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 3. Willing to grasp at any thread of hope, Naaman made the long trip to Israel. With him was a small band of personal bodyguards and a king's ransom to pay for the miracle of healing. When Naaman finally stood before the humble house of the prophet, Elisha would not come out. Instead, he sent his servant with these simple instructions. He said, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and ye shall be clean. 2 Kings 5.10 The prophet's command to him was to wash, which implied that Naaman was dirty. Being told to wash, and that too seven times in a muddy river, was too much for the proud Syrian general. In rage, Naaman spun his hots around and began riding home. But in order to reach Damascus, Naaman had to ride by River Jordan. As he passed by, Naaman's servants urged him to try the prophet's advice. So he stopped his thoughts, slid down, and laid aside the armor that covered the awful evidence of his leprosy. Naaman slowly stepped down into the waters of Jordan. Six times, he plunged under the water with no results. But when he came up the seventh time, the leprosy was gone. His skin was as pure and healthy as a baby's. Beloved, leprosy was a symbol of sin. We all have a worse disease than Naaman had. Naaman was dirty and needed to be clean, which only a miracle could do. So also, we are spiritually dirty, and only a miracle can cleanse us. Just as Naaman experienced restoration, and his skin, uh, skin became like that of a baby, you too can have a healing of a new birth experience. Let's go to our first question. What New Testament prophet washed people in the Jordan River? 
Matthew records, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Matthew 3 and verse 1. John the Baptist came to prepare the way for the first coming of Jesus. He called people to repentance and he baptized them as a symbol of their repentance to God and to accept the message and the messenger to come, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming again. The message of John the Baptist is again going to the whole world, asking people to repent and get baptized as a sign of accepting the message and the messenger, Jesus Christ, who is going to come to take his children home. Matthew records, people went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in Jordan River. Matthew chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. The gospel story begins and ends with the subject of baptism. Did you realize that? In the last chapter of the gospel of Matthew, we read, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, 18 and 19. Obviously, this is a very important teaching to Jesus. Therefore, one of the last things he spoke to us was about being baptized. Question number two. What glorious Bible ceremony symbolizes the washing away of the leprosy of sin? The Bible says in the book of Acts, Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Acts 22, 16. The Bible ordinance of baptism symbolizes the washing away of sins from a person's life as well as new birth. The water itself has no miraculous power to wash any sin, but the Word of God does. When we obey the Word of God and do what God has said, God uses that visible action of ours and performs the miracle. Paul connected water and word in Ephesians 5 26 which says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. The word washes us as we go to the waters. But if people refuse to go to the waters of baptism, the word will not wash us from our sins. Let's go to question number three. According to the Bible, how many different kinds of baptism are acceptable? Paul wrote, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, Ephesians 4, 5. Do you know that there are around 15 different ceremonies which are called baptism today? But according to the Bible, there is only one true baptism. All 15 of them cannot be true because they are different one from another. We will discover which one is biblical. Satan always has many counterfeits for one genuine. We need to embrace the right one and reject the wrong ones. Let's go to our next question. Baptism, what does it mean? The Greek word baptizo means to dip, to immerse, to plunge under water. I want you to note 
that the Greek word baptizo means to submerge, to plunge under, or to immerse. A person has not been baptized unless he has completely submerged or buried in water. The word baptizo is always used in the Bible in reference to the sacred ordinance of baptism. The Greek words for sprinkling or pouring were never used. I remember reading a true story of a young evangelist who was visiting a lady that attended his seminar. She was convinced of the truths, but she did not want to get baptized. She said she was already baptized by the priest when she was a baby, when he put some water on her forehead. The evangelist showed her from the Bible that baptism is not sprinkling, but immersion into water. But she said, I was sprinkled, so that's good enough as baptism for me. As he talked to her, he was silently praying and asking God for wisdom. Then a thought struck him. Her little puppy was just killed by a running vehicle while it was trying to cross the road. Now this happened just before the pastor arrived. So he asked her, what are you going to do with your dead dog? I'm going to bury it, she replied. He then said, so you're going to just throw some little grain of sand on it as burial, right? She said, of course not. I need to dig a hole and then place the animal in it and then cover it with mud. As soon as she said that, the meaning of baptism struck her powerfully. She understood a few drops of water were not biblical baptism. Then and there, she made up mind to be baptized. Let us now proceed to see what Paul said about the significance of baptism. He wrote, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. Baptism means burial, or to be submerged under water. Though baptism was introduced explicitly in the New Testament, the reflection of it is seen in the Old Testament as well. Remember when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, the land of slavery, to the promised land. One of the first things they had to do was to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. And that signified their redemption through the blood of Jesus. And God delivered them from Egypt, from the house of bondage to freedom. And the next thing they did was to cross the Red Sea. And this crossing of the Red Sea was a symbol of baptism. Paul the Apostle wrote in 1 Corinthians 10 2, and we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. As the Red Sea opened up and they passed through it, we see the Bible says elsewhere in Micah 7, 19, he will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. The same way, when a child of God believes in Jesus and is baptized, God symbolically washes away our sins in the waters and casts all our sins in the midst of the sea. Let us go to question number five. How was Jesus, who is our example, baptized? Let us see what Mark records. Jesus came and was baptized of John in Jordan 
and straight away coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened. Mark 1 verses 9 and 10. John baptized Jesus by immersion in the same river where Naaman was cleansed from leprosy. Note that they were in Jordan and not on the river bank. And Jesus came up out of the water. This is why John was baptizing in Enon near Salim because there was much water there according to John chapter 3 verse 23. Christians are to follow the example of Jesus who said, follow me. He was baptized by immersion to fulfill all righteousness, Matthew 3, 15. It was not necessary for Jesus to be baptized because he committed no sin. Therefore, there's nothing for him to repent. But he was baptized to set an example for us what we should do. He was a lamb without blemish and spot. But he went through the process of baptism for our sake so that he can set a wonderful example for us to do likewise. Let us go to question number six. How did Philip baptize the treasurer of Ethiopia? The book of Acts records, they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him, Acts 8, 38. And then it says, when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, Acts 8, 39. Just like Jesus, the Ethiopian eunuch also went down into the water and then came up because True baptism is to be immersed in the water for it symbolized burying our sins and then coming up to start a new life in Christ Jesus. Let's go to question number seven. What other truths are symbolized by baptism? The apostle Paul wrote, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. And he continues that like, as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Romans 6 and verse 4. And then he says, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Romans 6 and verse 5. Baptism symbolizes three things in these above verses. Christ's death, his burial, and resurrection. There is first death to sin, then burial of the whole life of sin in the water, and finally resurrection from the water to start a new life. Baptism by immersion fits the symbol perfectly. The life of sin dies. And then there is a brief suspension of breath while the person is baptized. And that perfectly symbolizes death where one stops breathing. Then the person leans backward into the water until the body is fully covered or buried in the water. This is to say that we bury people as well on the back, fully under the soil. Then the person is raised up and comes out of the water, taking a fresh breath as a newborn baby to live an entirely new life, symbolizing the resurrection. No other form of baptism fits biblical symbolism. Also, Another point to be noted here is, some say they keep Sunday sacred in honor of Jesus' resurrection. Have you heard that? But nowhere in the Bible it says that Sunday keeping would remind us of Jesus' resurrection. Yes, Jesus 
death, burial and resurrection are very important events that we need to constantly keep in our minds. In fact, God has instituted baptism precisely for that, to remember the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. God did not command us to celebrate Good Friday, Holy Saturday or Easter Sunday. These are man's ideas to remember those sacred moments in Jesus' life. But the Word of God has given us baptism to commemorate the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. When we follow God's instructions, there is always a blessing. But man's tradition, they bring no blessing at all. Let's go to a question number eight. How important is baptism? Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Mark 16 and verse 16. It is a matter of eternal salvation, according to Jesus. So it is not an option that we have. Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John chapter 3 and verse 5. Baptism is clearly mandated by Scripture as essential. However, when baptism is impossible as it was for the thief on the cross or when someone is on deathbed, Jesus' baptism at River Jordan would be the substitute there. But those who deliberately reject the instruction to get baptized are taking a big risk in regard to their salvation. As Jesus said here, they cannot enter the kingdom of God without being baptized. Some people think, since water baptism really doesn't cleanse us from our sins, therefore we really don't need to do it. Well, do you remember the story when the children of Israel were commanded to put the blood of animals on their doorpost? so that their firstborn would not die while the death angel passed over their houses that night? We know there is no virtue in the blood of animals. Yet, they had to put the blood of animals because God commanded them. And that blood symbolized the blood of Jesus that had virtue to cleanse us and to protect us. Now, if they did not put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, their firstborn would have died that night. The same way, there is no virtue in the water itself. The virtue is in the command, obeying what Jesus said, and therefore, we do it because He said it. It expresses our faith in Him for what He has done for us. Would you like to know God's plan for our broken world as revealed in Bible prophecy? Want practical, trusted solutions for your biggest challenges? Encouraging and enlightening, Amazing Facts Bible Study Guides provide 27 Bible-based topical lessons with beautiful graphics and straightforward answers that are easy to understand. Each study guide leads you toward real, relevant Bible answers for the most important questions in your life. How can I have healthier relationships? When and how will Jesus come again? And so much more. Don't leave your future to chance. Transform your life with truths from the Amazing Facts Bible Study Guides. Available in English, Hindi, Tamil, and Telugu. Don't wait. Order your complete set of study guides today by visiting bookstore.aftv.in.
Let us go to question number nine. What blessed ceremony can be compared to baptism? The scripture says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Galatians 3 and verse 27. The Bible says, Thy maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. In Isaiah 54 verse 5. As a woman takes her husband's name in marriage, so Christians take the name of Christ. Therefore, they are called Christians. Both ceremonies must be based on love and commitment if they are to be meaningful. Baptism is essential to a Christian life as a wedding is to a marriage. Let's go to question number 10. What command did Jesus give to his people just before his ascension. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28 19. Peter followed this command on the day of Pentecost. He told the penitent people, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 2 verse 38. Now what does this phrase to be baptized in the name of Jesus mean? Does it mean that believers were to be baptized only in the name of Jesus and not in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost? The phrase in the name of means in the authority of someone. For example, Paul wrote to the church of Thessalonica, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? It simply means we command you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. Also, we read in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, verse 16. As for the word which thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord. It simply means the word was spoken to them in the authority or command of the Lord. The word was to them. Let's go to our next question. Where did all the counterfeit forms of baptism originate? Jesus said, For laying aside the commandment of God, he old the tradition of men. Mark 7 and verse 8. Baptism by immersion was the only form of baptism practiced during Bible times and for centuries after the cross. But then, misguided men introduced other forms of baptism for the sake of convenience. Thus, God's sacred ordinance of baptism was distorted and its rich symbolic meaning obscured. It was not until the Council of Ravenna in AD 1311 that sprinkling and pouring were officially accepted as equally valid as immersion in the rite of baptism. Let's go to question number 12. What does the Bible say about those who put the teaching of men before the truth of God? Jesus said, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Matthew 5, 15, 19. True worship is based only on God's word and not on man's opinion. God rejects any worship that is based on human traditions and philosophies. Remember Cain, who came to worship God in his own terms, in his own ways. God rejected Cain and his worship. Paul said, 
But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Galatians 1.8 There is no one who can contradict the word of God, which God has already established in the Holy Scriptures. Even if someone claims that an angel came to him and spoke to him and revealed some matter, he might claim to be an apostle or a prophet or a great teacher. Beloved, we do not follow them. God says such a person is accursed if they preach anything contrary to what is written. Let us go to question number 13. But doesn't the baptism of the Holy Spirit replace baptism by immersion? Peter said, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Notice that while Peter was preaching, the Holy Spirit fell upon them who were listening to the word of God, and many of whom there were not even baptized. Peter said in Acts 10, 47 and 48, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, the Bible says. Now, even though they had already received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Peter insisted that they be baptized in water as well. So the spirit baptism does not replace the water baptism or vice versa. Both are essential for salvation. Jesus also said the same thing, baptized of water and the spirit. Let's go to question 14. According to the Bible, what must a person do before he is baptized? One, he must understand Jesus' teachings. Matthew 28, 19, 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So teaching precedes baptism and also follows baptism according to these verses. And one must believe all of Jesus' teachings, Mark 16, 16. It says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. After being taught, one has to exercise faith and believe that is the next step and one must repent of past sins acts 2 38 says repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and he shall receive the gift of the holy spirit so there must be genuine sorrow for sin demonstrated before baptism. Also, one must agree to turn from sin. The apostle said in Romans 6 and verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. The life of sin must be left behind in the waters of baptism. After that, we are to be servants of righteousness and not servants of sin. Also, one must accept Christ as his personal savior and experience the new birth. 
the master told Nicodemus in John chapter 3 verses 3 and 5 Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God Jesus answered verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God baptism is a new birth it is a brand new start Paul said therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new 2nd Corinthians 5 17 the Christian's life is not a modification or an improvement of the old but it's a transformation of nature there is a death to self and sin and a new life altogether. This change can be brought about only by the effectual working of the Holy Spirit. Kindly note, there are some churches that practice infant baptisms. Is that biblical? We just saw five steps that precede baptism. Since an infant cannot comply with any of these above steps, obviously, it is not the scriptural way to do it. Beloved, we need to follow God's word. An infant cannot be taught. An infant cannot exercise faith and believe. An infant cannot repent. An infant cannot agree to turn from sins. An infant cannot accept Jesus as a personal Savior and Lord. Therefore, infant baptism is a tradition of man and it must be rejected as God will not approve it. Let's go to question number 15. Is baptism ever proper? When Paul visited Ephesus, he found some disciples there who were already baptized by John the Baptist. But these disciples never knew there was someone called the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, what then, unto what then were he baptized? Acts 19 verses 2 and 3. And they said unto John's baptism, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. Acts 19 verses 3 and 4. That is on Jesus Christ. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 19 4 and 5. Let us put down some key points from the above passage. One, the believers at Ephesus said, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost, Acts 19.2. Two, it means the name Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost was not heard by them prior to this. Point three, the apostle Paul was surprised that they did not even hear the name of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he immediately asked them something about baptism. He said, unto what then were he baptized? Acts 19.3. Because at least at baptism time, they should have heard of the Holy Spirit. Paul reasoned out. Why? Because when one is baptized, the Holy Spirit is also mentioned according to Jesus' command of baptism as given in Matthew 28, 19. Point number four. They replied that they received the ordinance of baptism by John and not Jesus. They said, unto John's baptism, Acts 19, verse 3. Point number five. 
John the Baptist while baptizing people, just immersed people who repented without invoking the name of God. It was a baptism of repentance, Acts 19.4. Point number six, the baptism command of Jesus is a full and complete one. First teaching, then baptizing in the threefold name, then commanding them to observe all that he has said. In Matthew 28, verse 7 we read. Also, after receiving instruction from Paul of the difference between John's baptism and Jesus' baptism command, the Bible says they were baptized in the name of the Lord. Acts 19 and verse 5. So if someone is learning a major fundamental belief, they could be rebaptized. Also, if someone who knew all the right doctrines and was baptized the right way, but drifted away from the truth and left the church and became a part of the world like the prodigal son, and then he comes back, he needs to repent and be baptized again. Let's go to question number 16. Is baptism connected with joining a church? The scripture says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Acts 2.41 So this text clearly says that by baptism one is added to the church. Also in Acts 2, 47, we read, Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. An inspired writer said, I quote, The church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service and its mission is to carry the gospel to the whole world. From the beginning, it has been God's plan that through His church shall be reflected to the world His fullness and His sufficiency. The members of the church, those whom He has called out of darkness into His marvelous light, are to show forth His glory. The church is the repository of the riches of the grace of Christ and through the church will eventually be made manifest even to the principalities and powers in heavenly places, the final and full display of the love of God." Unquote. Through baptism, one enters the portals of the church and is part of the bride of Christ on earth. And God uses the members of His church and commissions them with the task of enlightening the whole world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote, "Ye are called in one body, Colossians 3 and verse 15. The scriptures are unmistakable. All of God's people are called into one body, which is the church, and we enter it by baptism. Just as after the birth, a baby must be placed in a family for nurturing, for protection, for growth, so also a newborn spiritual baby must be cared for in an environment where they can grow spiritually in Christ and have brothers and sisters who will be with them and guide them in their journey of faith. It's a wonderful concept that God has created. Through baptism, one joins the family of God. Also, at this time, our names are not just written in the record books of the church. It is also 
recorded in heaven in the Lamb's book of life. Let's go to question number 17. If I refuse baptism, whose counsel am I refusing? The Bible says, but the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized by him. Luke 7, 30. It is important to receive the counsel of God in everything, including this matter of getting baptized by water. For rejecting the counsel of God leads to rejecting God himself because God and his word cannot be separated. Let's go to question number 18. When Jesus was baptized, what did his father say? The scripture says, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Mark 1 and verse 9. And it continues, And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Mark 1 and verse 11. As the Father declared at baptism, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Father declares when every son and daughter gets baptized, that this is my beloved Son, this is my beloved daughter, in whom I am well pleased. As he gave the Holy Spirit to Jesus at baptism, God is going to send his Spirit to strengthen us as well. The Bible says, and now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Acts 22, 16. Do not delay in making this decision for Jesus. Many have waited too long for a convenient time to make that most important decision. When Paul preached on important matters to Governor Felix, he trembled at the word of God. He was convicted of the truth, but he did not take that important decision to give his life to Jesus in baptism as the Roman centurion did at Philippi. The Bible says, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. But that convenient time never came, and he missed his opportunity to be saved. Dear friend, would you like to begin preparing for the sacred rite of baptism so that God can say, Thou art my beloved son, daughter, in whom I am well pleased. This is the only decision that you have to make. This is the only thing that you have to do in the plan of salvation. Make a decision to follow Jesus. Then he takes over. He is the author and finisher of the faith, but he will never force you. He only invites you. He is inviting you today to prepare to get baptized by water and of the Spirit so that you can be a part of God's church, the bride of Jesus, and you can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life and be saved when Jesus comes. Do not delay this important decision. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father, I pray that none would delay, none would procrastinate. Help us, Lord, as your word says, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. This decision can decide our destiny. I pray that we would make that right decision to be baptized the right way. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Kids Bible Guides from Amazing Facts. These lessons are very colorful and are filled with exciting puzzles and questions that make learning fun. They are full of Bible truths and will take your children on 10 amazing adventures like slaying the dragon, the only lifeboat, journey through the sea, and whistling through the graveyard. I have learned so much. Call or message us now to order the complete set today so your kids can learn some amazing facts from the Bible. On Christmas Eve, 1971, 17-year-old Julianne Kopka boarded Lanza Flight 508 with her mother in Lima, Peru. They intended to join her father for Christmas at his research station in the Amazon rainforest. After crossing the Andes at about 21,000 feet, their aircraft was enveloped by large dark thunderclouds and it encountered severe turbulence. Lightning was flashing everywhere and the plane was shaken violently, which naturally terrified the passengers. Then a bolt of lightning struck the plane's engine and tore off a wing. As the doomed airliner hurtled towards the earth, the cabin came apart, and the next thing she knew, Julianne found herself strapped alone to a row of seats, falling and spinning silently from over 10,000 feet above the rainforest. She plummeted through the jungle canopy and slammed on the forest floor. When she awoke the next day, Julianne was amazed to realize she had survived the two-mile fall with just a broken collarbone and a bad gash in her arm. After failing to find any other survivors, Julianne relied on what her father had taught her, that walking downstream will always lead to civilization. So, with a bag of candy that had fallen from the plane and one sandal, she started walking. For 10 days, Julianne hobbled, swam, or floated downstream. Her wounds became infected and she was plagued by maggots while having to dodge crocodiles, piranhas, and relentless insects. Eventually, she came to a shack where she slept and she was soon discovered by Peruvian loggers. Eventually, Julianne was united with her amazed father. It's hard to imagine a 17-year-old girl surviving such a fall and then hiking alone out of the world's largest rainforest. You know, the Bible talks about some who survived an even greater fall than Julianne. In fact, according to the scriptures, when Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, it brought the whole human race down. But Jesus came to redeem the world from sin. Perhaps you're thinking to yourself, well, that's okay for the world, but I've fallen too far. Well, if the Lord could save Julianne, God can save you. You've not gone farther than Moses, who is guilty of murder, or David, who is guilty of adultery, or Peter, who denied Jesus, and all of them were saved and restored from their fall. Or maybe you're thinking, I've fallen too many times. Be of good courage. It says in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16, a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. And Jesus cast seven devils out of Mary Magdalene. So don't get discouraged, friend. If you've fallen, get back up again. The same way that he could save Julianne, lead her from that lost condition in the rainforest and restore her to her father, Jesus can lead you from your lost condition and restore you to your heavenly father. are beautiful and isn't it amazing that everything required to make a tree can be found inside a little seed? You know what else is amazing? Inside this little QR code is everything you need to help you grow spiritually. The Amazing Facts India Link Tree 
Just scan it and you'll be connected to our Bible reading plan, a website, our bookstore, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, share chat, and so much more. You're now connected. Scan this little QR code and start growing today. One of the most confusing subjects in the world today is what happens when we die. Now you can help your friends and family avoid being tricked by all the deceptions. The Afterlife Mystery is a colorful 32-page magazine that outlines the Bible facts about death, hell, and eternal life in an attractive and contemporary way. Let those you love know the truth about death and the comfort and reassurance they can have today for their future. To get your copy of The Afterlife Mystery, visit bookstore.aftv.in today. For more than 50 years, Amazing Facts has been boldly sharing Bible truth around the world in response to Jesus' commission to preach His gospel to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Thank you for your prayers and support.